this recording we'll discuss the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. So if we talk very briefly about the physical descriptions of the neurons themselves that are associated with the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, we'll notice that the neurons themselves look a little bit different. So keep in mind with the autonomic nervous system we are working with two different neurons, a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. If we are talking about the sympathetic division, okay, the preganglionic neuron, the axon is very, very short, while the postganglionic axon is very, very long. If we come down here and look at the parasympathetic, it is the exact opposite. The preganglionic axon is very long, but the postganglionic axon is very short. Boop. Okay, that's all we get. Now, if we also look at the location where these neurons live, it's also different. Your sympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic neurons live in your thoracic and your lumbar region. Okay, so the cell bodies of these neurons live in either the thoracic or lumbar regions of your spinal cord. Okay, parasympathetic is a little bit different. Okay, the cell bodies. Um, here start in either the brainstem region or the sacral region of the spinal cord. Okay. So the axons are a little bit different and the locations are a little bit different. Okay. Now just to refresh, we are talking about your motor division of your peripheral nervous system, specifically the autonomic or the visceral motor division we are getting ready to chat about the differences between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Okay, so just kind of to refresh your brain real quick. Now both of these divisions work under subconscious control or involuntary control and they work in an antagonistic relationship uh, with each other. So for example, if your sympathetic nervous system increases one particular function, your parasympathetic nervous system could very well decrease that function and vice versa. Okay. Now, your autonomic nervous system plays a huge role in helping us maintain homeostasis okay, for most of the essential functions of the entire body. So homeostasis overall is controlled by the hypothalamus. Okay, Our hypothalamus is in control and the reticular formation of your brain stem. Okay, so these two brain regions are working together. Okay. So the actions that are going to be carried out by your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, the, the plan, okay, is coming from these regions, the hypothalamus, the reticular formation. Okay. In particular, within your reticular formation, you have regions, these autonomic center regions. They are what are contacting the hypothalamus directly. Okay. These neurons control the activity of your preganglionic neurons for both your sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. Okay. <clears throat> so these autonomic centers in the reticular formation, we're going to chat with the hypothalamus. We're going to say, all right, hypothalamus, this is what we need to do. Okay. And we are going to send the plan through preganglionic neurons, whether it be the sympathetic branch or the parasympathetic branch. Did I skip one? Oh, all right, here we go. Okay, so sympathetic nervous system. This is the fight or flight division. Okay, so we briefly mentioned that the preganglionic cell bodies are going to be coming from the thoracic or the upper lumbar region. So here's our picture. Here's our thoracic and our lumbar region. Okay, these are our cell bodies coming from the spinal cord. Um, you'll hear this term thoracolumbar division a lot. Okay. Pretty good name, right? Now, the sympathetic ganglia, okay, so ganglia is just plural for ganglion, okay? Remember the ganglia are the little relay stations, okay? So, these ganglia, you will notice in our picture here, these ganglia are basically right next door to the spinal cord themselves. Okay. Now we said that the preganglionic axon was actually pretty short. Okay. So it should make sense that the ganglia are going to be nearby. Okay. Now you will notice 
that, for example, we could talk to the aorta, okay, and different branches of the aorta, so your inferior mesenteric artery, your superior mesenteric artery, all those good things, okay. The postganglionic neurons, those axons, will have to go all the way boop, to the target organ. So remember, those can get really, really long. Now, now that we know where we are, okay, we got that wrapped around our minds, um, keep in mind what we're doing. Okay, so your sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, this is going to be in charge when you are doing physical work or when you are really emotional. Okay, and if you remember back to the last time, you like ugly cried. All right, you got real emotional. Um, a lot of the physical symptoms that you experience are very similar to what you would experience if you were exercising really hard. Okay, so if you're really getting emotional, if you're really crying out, your respiration increases, your heart rate increases, all that good stuff, just like if you were doing physical work. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing now. Here in this, these are just, I'm going to put a note, these are just examples. This list is not all inclusive. These are just examples. Okay? If you are engaging your sympathetic nervous system, the following will be increased. Okay? Mental alertness, metabolism, blood flow to your brain and skeletal muscles, um, respiratory passageway dilation, okay, so bronchodilation, heart rate increase, blood pressure increase. Sweat gland activation, okay? And the activation of energy reserves. So we're finally getting to break down some fat to make glucose, okay? All of these things are gonna be increased. But notice we do have a small list of things that would be decreased, okay? So if you are in the middle of fighting or flighting, you are not worried about digesting your lunch and you don't have time to stop and go to the bathroom, okay? So digestive system functions and urinary functions will all be decreased if you are activating your sympathetic nervous system, okay? Um, just as a little helpful hint, sympathetic nervous system, think of the ease, exercising, excitement, emergencies, embarrassment, things like that, okay? Again, this list is not all inclusive. It's just giving you a starting point, okay? Now, let's compare that to our parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, our rest and digest. Now, we said that our pregagliotic cell bodies were going to live in a different place. Now we are starting in either the brain stem or the sacral region. Okay. You might hear this term the craniosacral division. Okay. Now, the ganglia themselves. Um, and this picture is a little deceptive. Okay. The ganglia themselves are actually usually located next to the target organ, okay? Why? Because if you remember, our preganglionic neuron is very, very long, okay? Postganglionic neuron is very, very short, okay? So that means the ganglia themselves will have to basically live right next door to the target organs, okay? So again, this picture is a little deceiving, but we actually don't really have um, any target organs here in this picture at all. So uh, here we go. Here's a little bit better. So you can see these little ganglia being represented much closer to the target organs than in previous pictures. Okay, so hopefully that <clears throat> makes it a little bit better for you. Now, if we are using our synthetic division, we are resting and digesting, the following will be increased digestion, urination, defecation, okay? So you remember all those things that we decreased with your sympathetic nervous system? We said we'd have time to digest our lunch, we have time to go potty. Now we have time to do all that because we're resting and we're digesting, okay? Now, if we're increasing these things, it should make perfect sense that we're decreasing all the other things that we just increased. So your metabolism goes back down, your heart rate goes back down, your blood pressure goes back down. Okay, so for parasympathetic, a little memory trick here. Think of the D's, digestion, defecation, diuresis, okay? These are the D's. All right, summary slide, sympathetic division, okay? We're coming from the thoracolumbar area. Preganglionic neurons are short. 
postganglionic neurons are long, so the ganglion themselves live close to the spinal cord. Parasympathetic nervous system, we're coming from the brain, brain stem, and the sacral region, okay, so craniosacral. Um, Preganglionic axon is very, very long. Postganglionic axon is very short, and so the ganglion themselves have to live close to the target organs or the effector organs. Okay. Now, even though the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions, we said they were antagonistic, okay, that doesn't mean that they don't actually work together. Okay, so if you remember back to how homeostasis works, if you remember back to when we talked about feedback loops, negative feedback loops, okay, we said it was perfectly normal to get away from homeostasis. Okay, so for example, for our blood sugar to go up after we eat, or for our blood sugar to go down when we skip lunch, it's perfectly normal. And we've also talked about how the response to those conditions is going to be different. So what we do to fix high blood sugar is going to be different than what we do to fix low blood sugar. But those have to work together to keep us in balance. The same thing applies here. So your parasympathetic and sympathetic, they're working together to keep us within our normal homeostatic ranges. Okay. A lot of times, both divisions will innervate the same organs, and we call this the dual innervation. Okay. Um, this dual innervation allows for your sympathetic division to become dominant if we need, and it triggers the effects that help us maintain homeostasis during the physical work that we've talked about. Okay. Your parasympathetic division regulates some organs as well to preserve homeostasis between periods of physical activity. So we're not constantly working. We're not constantly um, being emotional, okay? At some point, our body has to rest, okay? If we are working or if we are really emotional or anything like that, the dual innervation allows sympathetic division to kind of take over for a point, okay, for a small period of time. But at some point, we're going to wear ourselves out. That parasympathetic division is going to jump in. It's going to take over, and it's going to put us into that rest and digest. We're going to get back to normal. Okay. Now, autonomic tone. Okay. This refers to the fact that neither division is ever completely turned off. Okay, it's not flip a switch, sympathetic is on, flip the switch the other way, parasympathetic is on. Okay, it's a little bit of a lot of things happening at the same time. So we have a couple of different tones to mention real quick. Your sympathetic tone dominates the blood vessels. Okay, this means that your blood vessels are partially constricted at all times. This helps us maintain homeostasis with regards to our blood pressure. Okay. Parasympathetic tone, however, dominates the heart itself. Okay. This keeps your average heart rate at approximately 72 beats per minute. Okay. So again, these are just kind of baseline. Okay, so on a regular basis, even if you are sitting there resting and digesting, your sympathetic tone helps keep your blood vessels partially constricted, okay, um, just to help keep up blood pressure. And if you're still resting and digesting, then that heart rate is going to be about 72 beats per minute, okay. Now, obviously, if we get up and start exercising, then our sympathetic can take over with the heart and we can increase our heart rate but just on a regular basis, we're averaging about 72 beats per minute. Okay. 